Lord. The uh, 12 of December 2022 Jackson County Commission meeting is uh, called to order. I'd like to welcome everyone here tonight. We we have a uh, full agenda. We, we have a very pleasant agenda because we're going to be able to recognize some of our county employees tonight. Um, at this time, I'd, I'd like Ms. Johnson, the Assistant County Administrator, to please call the roll and establish the quorum. Commissioner Bowie? Present. Commissioner Cameron? Present. Commissioner Gardner? Present. Commissioner McBride? Present. We do have a quorum. Thank you very much. And at this time, if everyone would please stand, we'd like to ask uh, Mr. Ford, our county attorney, to please offer our invitation. And Commissioner Cameron, please lead our Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray together. Mm -hmm. God, our Father in heaven, we look to you for answers for all of the questions that we have and all the problems and life that we have. And we're so thankful that we have that opportunity. Uh, this week, as we do every week, we, we thank you for those in public service, those that serve on the commission, and, and especially tonight, God, our, our law enforcement officers, those that put themselves in harm's way on a daily basis to keep us safe. God, we're thankful for them and for the family. We pray you'll continue to be with them and watch over them and guide them, give them strength and determination and compassion when it's called for. God, we pray you'll continue to watch over our county, especially during this time of year as we look to uh, the birth of Jesus Christ and the a celebration of, of that time. So God, we're thankful for all your blessings. Watch over us all. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 portion of our meeting and a number of activities for our, our work session. So at this time, do I have a motion to approve the agenda for the 12 December 2022 commission meeting? I'll make that motion. We have a motion. I have a second? I'll second. We have a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion uh, is carried to approve the agenda. Uh, it's a pleasure tonight that uh, we have the opportunity to recognize uh, some of our county employees that have uh, achieved a milestone and certifications in, in uh, the great uh, job that they have for us uh, here in, in uh, Jackson County working with the jail. So at this time, I'd like to ask Chief Corrections Deputy Al Nash to come forward and uh, with that to recognize uh, the jail corrections deputies who have completed uh, the required certification training. Uh, and to present those certifications. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I'm proud to be here tonight uh, to recognize these individuals. Um, they have a tough job. Um, we go from zero to 120 in a second at the jail, and there are very few zero minutes. They put up with things that uh, would be hard for some people to believe unless they see it happening. And quite honestly, they deal with the people that the citizens of Jackson County don't want to deal with. Unlike a motel, we have to take everybody that's brought to our door. We can't refuse service. Uh, in doing that, they have to fight COVID, they have to fight the flu, they have to fight uh, all these things that go around uh, virus type uh, attitude ones, lies they fight. Uh, when I say fight, most of them do it with their voice with their compassion because we're charged with the care, custody, and control of these folks. And it's something that we try to keep in mind at the jail that no matter what they've done, God loves them as much as he does us. That's hard to do sometimes. But these folks uh, have attended uh, different classes for certification. The first group I'll call up is Gary Riggs, Jesse Gamble, and Bryce Milligan. I'm going to ask Captain Miller, who is, is the captain at the jail, to present the certificates. Uh, each year, County Risk Services requires us to send people for year long uh, four different classes in Prattville, Alabama for two days. Uh, we're required to do that. Uh, and these gentlemen have uh, uh, completed that uh, annual uh, pilgrimage to Prattville. I don't know why they don't have it. A little north, more north of here, but they don't. And uh, they've gone to uh, those sessions, uh, two-day sessions, 
and then for a completed video requirements that's required uh, by County Risk Services more proudly. And Gary Briggs, Jesse Gamble, and Bryce Milligan. Thank you. If you would, after you go back, when I call the next group up, I want all y'all to say those on the group photo so we can get it in the video and get you folks recognized. Right, thank you. Uh, but that's true. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll call up is uh, Miles Edmondson, Heather Davis, Matthew Pope, and Jordan Hill. Thank you. 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 There's an ADL of posts that uh, the APOS, the APOS is Alabama Peace Officer Standards and Training Commission, offer for jail uh, employees and corrections deputies come certified in jail management. These four individuals have completed that eight hour, uh, 80 hour course. Uh, they went to Coleman and stayed two weeks. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of testing going on. I, I did it when I came to work here, and I was surprised how deep they went into uh, uh, bachelor management and uh, different facets of uh, participating in running the jail. So I'm proud of them. They all passed uh, and they all were professional while they were down there. Miles Edmondson, Kayla Davis, Matthew Poland, and Dakota McDaniel. I'll notice we have uh, female corrections deputies too. We had a female population that jail when it was built with 208 beds. They built 24 racks of beds for women. Today we have 42 women in jail. Mm -hmm. uh, so the uh, women have it usually a little bit tougher than men doing the baby crowding. But thank you all. <laughs> Next, Sergeant Lively. We had an opportunity, a, a course uh, flyer came through about six or eight months ago. So those that I've spent on training one person, spent a thousand dollars to get him trained, plus motels and gas over there. Where'd you go, Wyatt? Somewhere in Tennessee, wasn't it? Auburn. Auburn, we'll talk about Auburn. Just to give you an idea, and the reason I did that is he is a certified master instructor now. I do not have to send people out. He can instruct them at the jail. He's a certified master instructor in confrontational avoidance techniques, cell extractions, handheld chemical weapons, OEO Capscom, disturbance control team, less of lethal shotgun, control resistant techniques, handcuffing, handcuffing and emergency response. Uh, Bell Edged Weapon Defense and Royal Arms FBG MK4 with a Basic Operator Certification course. So that I'm proud of and uh, why we're proud of you and thank you for what you do. That's the way thank you. With that also, not only can he train jail personnel, but he can train uh, Rockies folks also. So it'll save us uh, sending folks out. Thank you. Stand in. Uh, you
appreciate every one of you for being part of the team that uh, we rely on so much here in Jackson County. We know you have a very tough job, and uh, we truly appreciate what you're doing for us. So, and, uh, so at this time, I have not had that meeting. I'm sorry, they got to get back to the joke. I'm just saying. At this time, we do have a uh, public comment. Uh, Mr. Olson, we welcome you back uh, for a comment. Uh, you, you've visited with us several times. I do have to ask you for the record a couple of questions, and if you would answer, uh, would you state your full name, sir? I'm Layton Olson. And are you representing yourself or an organization? I'm representing myself and, uh, in fact, a, um, a volunteer group uh, network called Internet Public Trust. Okay, thank you very much, sir. I have three minutes for you tonight, and so with that, I uh, may have the opportunity to extend a little bit. But we do have a busy agenda tonight, so well, your, your turn. Whenever I come up here, uh, think of telecommunications and economic development, particularly broadband and money. Deadline dates uh, for money now and in the future. Um, and particularly, I would be interested in uh, connecting up if helpful with the point person for Jackson County um, who will be putting in some of the federal broadband grant allocations. The next one is due on the inclusion program for outreach and activity January 9th. So it's either in the works right now um, or it better be or money's gone. Okay. The next one will be in, uh, in May. And, uh, and I'd like to encourage uh, all of the activities that particularly involve schools, not just the towns, the town and the, the counties, but the schools, uh, because if they if they miss out now, the money's gone for two years next May. So uh, I would encourage persons to, to to work that way. I'd be glad to meet with anybody from that that side of things. And the material that you have here comes from my participation. Um, Back in October, uh, in Orange Beach, with the Alabama and the Mississippi um, Planning Associations, the joint states. And uh, there they had uh, presentations about uh, uh, community planning, uh, particularly from Auburn and Alabama a &M. And this comes out of that kind of activity. And uh, uh, this was, the question was, how to get just a, a little bit of money to do a little bit more planning for cooperative planning among uh, K-12s and the county school areas, uh, the health care service areas, community college areas, the utility service areas, which are often about the same as the community college, regional universities like Jacksonville State, uh, regional planning agencies like Tarkon, the state universities and they have services like Alabama and um, And the kinds of activities include everything for planting and uh, after Christmas or from Jewelry, you want to do a planting. This doesn't take too much. So if you want to do some planting, uh, I like red beds, dogwoods, hell, or whatever, oaks, or whatever it is, but this is something that can be done. And there's uh, some free game trees from down in something called Green Leaf Alabama down in Birmingham. So, if this gets on the agenda, and this is something that high school classes can help out with. Um, and again, school classes are involved. Tourism calendars to put this in. Uh, a lot of this came out of the Red Bull plan for um, South Cal and Cherokee counties have gone through college show. So the people just don't buzz on both to Fort Payne or appear in the big town. We want people to stop and do things there and this will be an annual spring type thing because if you don't know, March 21 every year, my clockwork, Redwoods, then Dogwoods, about East, whatever. And the last one is a mouthful, but the general health asset building agenda, that means generating revenue for some of these things after the next couple of years. So with um, that in mind, if there's any questions or if there's any person that I might follow up with, I talked in the last... Well, sir, uh, let me say thank you for being here. Thanks for your comments.
comments. We do have a person that uh, you, you can uh, uh, get in touch with. Uh, she works in the commission office. She is with her job is uh, as our grants and project coordinator. And uh, if you will call the commission office, it's, uh, it's Mr. Perkins. It's Mr. Perkins. Mr. Perkins, and that's her role. And she would be uh, very willing to hear what the grant opportunities are. So if you would please call, or you can get in touch with me. And I'll sign up to get in touch with her. Mr. Perkins, we'll have you in touch with me. We have and a lot of us in the last couple of weeks uh, have been in concert with talking to um, uh, state rep, the new state rep, um, okay. Mike Kirkland, uh, and uh, Senator Livingston, and then down in Cherokee, South Dakota, to look for Jimmy Shaver and Senator Alex Jones down there. They're all kind of interested, and I've got to find a champion among them. So I have an answer to be, if you need a champion who says, and then they need to lean on people on your behalf. We want to be able to get them to it. So we'll see what we call this. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks for your comment. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, at this time, uh, we will move into the uh, new business portion of our meeting. First uh, item on new business is uh, our minutes. Uh, we have minutes uh, in the packet from the November the 18th the work session and our November the 28th meeting and work session. At this time, do I have a motion to approve the minutes uh, for our November the 28th uh, or November the 18th work session and our November the 28th meeting and work session? I make that motion. We have a motion. Have a second. A second. Have a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. At our last uh, work session, we discussed two uh, activities that uh, we would uh, to proceed with. We would need to get um, a a professional services fund to help us understand what the design implications would be as well as uh, program planning and for the schedule of planning and then uh, help us with the spec and build process. Uh, we have uh, used the services of JM R plus H for the activity we're currently traveling on with our HVAC system and by the way we are, we are hopeful now that we will have a bid openings on the 22nd of this month going forward for that activity. So in the, in the packet we had last time, we had the, uh, we had the uh, full uh, contract package that uh, uh, we would uh, be utilizing. Uh, same group, exact same contract package that we had for the HVAC system for the courthouse. Um, before we move to the motions, let me ask first uh, in terms of the courthouse, uh, structural repairs and interior renovations or any discussion or questions? If no discussion, then I have a motion uh, to approve JMRA's professional services contract for structural repairs and interior renovations for the courthouse. I'm going to do this. We have a motion. We have a second. I'll second that. We have a second. Uh, no further discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Also in the packet is a uh, contract uh, with, again, professional services. This would be for the same activity for design, architectural design, as well as uh, bid spec. Uh, packaging and program management and uh, following uh, the activities of that. Um, same, again, the same contract structure that we have for the HVAC system. Um, any discussion? So no discussion. Do I have a motion to approve JMR plus H professional services contract for Liberty Lane building renovations? I'll make that motion. I have a motion. We have a second. A second. I have a second. No further discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, the hiring committee has met uh, for uh, filling a, a vacant position with our maintenance uh, journeyman in the maintenance department. Um, and uh, so, do I have a motion to approve the hiring committee's 
first recommendation for the vacant maintenance chairman and maintenance department that uh, letter of recommendation uh, is in your in your packet. I'll make the motion with follow the recommendation of the committee. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. I'll second that. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. A few of these uh, documents out of the way. We will move to the next. Um, in our last meeting, we had a discussion about a grant opportunity uh, for Rebuild Alabama, uh, a grant selection for 2023. And uh, at this time for, for discussion, I uh, would like to turn it over to our Director of Public Works, uh, Mr. Campbell. Thank you, Chair. Uh, gentlemen, I don't, I don't have anything further to add unless there are any questions uh, from the last discussion. So as a reminder, this is a $250,000 grant and it, uh, it does not require matching funds, as I understand. Yes, sir. Okay. And so our task before us is to review out a uh, list of recommended uh, projects, uh, to run projects to consider, and we would have to make a selection. But again, remember that the grant application is for $250,000. So, uh, any questions? Any recommendations on the little project for consideration or utilization of the grant? Jonathan, something interesting that you said, you said last time you, that you applied for 47 last time they got rejected. Yes, that's correct. Um, we have we have applied for candidate 47 and had favorable conversations um, and felt really comfortable about that. It received commission support. Uh, we put the packet together, assembled everything, and moved them on selected. Just, just not selected or reserved. Okay. Um, all right. So, so in your in your recommendation, which which is the highest need? I mean, I know you you're an advocate for preservation, but uh, with the resurfacing of 18, uh, with the traffic count on that, is that is that the most attractive road at this point? So I, I guess it really just depends, and, and the reason I say that is because of price tag. Um, if there's going to be anything in excess of the 250 amount that the chairman has mentioned, then we need to also make some allocation of funding. So, County Road 18, uh, as you see, is higher 82. It's 1.25 miles versus the longer length of the others. It is in worse condition, um, but it does come at a higher price tag. So, if we're looking for things in the amount that will require smaller matches, one of the two pavement preservation offers that are near that price tag would be better. And if we are willing to commit to the amount in excess of $250,000, then 18 would also be a good choice. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Rooms right now, there is not, and we're going to have this discussion a little more. There is, there is not uh, sufficient funds in uh, public works budget right now to take on rural roads, local roads. So if we uh, if we have to supplement the funding for this, it would have to come either either out of uh, cash balance or general fund which we're also going to have to use some of that for uh, local roads. Uh, uh, that's, that's about the availability of funds that we have to take. Well, that, that being said, I, I, I think the, the choice is really between the two payment reservations. Um, I, think, I think either one would be the choice now. Is it two, two, up to 250 or is it a 250? Up to 250. Okay, so, and, and, and are these numbers, I mean, we've seen these numbers for a while, is that today's, based on today's materials, or is 
that subject has changed. Now, we should have been out there to pass the, um, from the August time frame and better things about the August, so the numbers should, should be good. Okay. So, if what you look from the payment preservation of the Gotham, do you have a preference on, or do you see which one would fall into the probably the most needed of the two? Either or fine. Um, it's, it's really up, up to you guys on selection. Um, 19, we do have some requests that are dropping, and uh, there's some areas that show uh, on that particular project some some attention needed to some of the crash crash concern areas. So um, we have in some of the curve sections on 19, we have delineated the curves and taken some steps on signage. Uh, but we do have a current request for striping on that roadway too, so that would take care of that if that were selected. So the striping's in that price? Yes, sir. When you look, look at your list of those two that sort of within the bottom of funds, you get not a tremendously greater number of, uh, of uh, ADT uh, usage out of 260 to 19. Uh, you get a little more mileage out of that. Uh, but uh, 19 is last paid was 2001 and 260 was 2004. I guess if it's been that long, it really doesn't make a difference. And they're both in dire need of help. So. I'm sorry, say that again. Both of these, out of selected, would go from red to green as far as the distribution that we looked at. I mean, I make like motion to select uh, Canada 19 uh, for its condition and uh, the fact that we can we can get double the mileage from the 18 project. Plus, it's been the longest, so that's, that's my recommendation. Okay. We have a motion on 19. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, sounds good. So the motion carries to approve uh, County Road 19 for pavement preservation for uh, rebuild Alabama Grant Selection Program for 2023. Thank you very much. Okay, next um, we have uh, a discussion, or we had a discussion on the last meeting about a GIS technology program, that's, that's geographic information systems, and um, the uh, opportunity we have to uh, purchase that system uh, for Jackson County, we do not have that now. Uh, it would help us better to find our, 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 our uh, district boundaries uh, in, in Jackson County. And the question that we had last time was an estimated amount of cost to do this. First off, I think, think it's uh, the Secretary of State is, uh, is the way this program is structured. Uh, we provide funding for uh, the first year of cost to, to install and potentially uh, the first year of uh, monthly uh, fees uh, to implement the program. Uh, the cost estimates we have for the uh, the other and in installation would be ten thousand uh, two hundred fifty dollars, and an um, expected monthly uh, maintenance fee of uh, eight eight hundred dollars. The years after that, uh, we probably we need to consider that, that that those funds would have to be paid for by by the county uh, or years two through whatever. So, any further discussion? Uh, I'd like to ask a uh, revenue commissioner, uh, Mr. Arnold, uh, any comment regarding this? Is this, is this something that through your office you're going to be able to, to, to so, so, the only, it's got nothing to do with me, absolutely nothing to do with me. The reason that me and the chairman, it's through KCS, Key Consulting Services, that's added for our maps on our on my website. I've been using them for seven years now, I've known them for 10, 20, 15 years, 20 years. Uh, great company, great guy. Uh, he's not the monopoly on it, it's just that he's the only company that's doing it. Uh, you know, other companies could be on it, but he's the only company that's doing it. For, for 
board of secretary of state so i got the prize for uh chairing and it, but it's still the board of registrars it won't be housed in my office uh, i will maintain it rightfully i should and it should be the board of registrars that maintains it but as far as the company i, I can speak for the company and keep uh ethan he's a great guy even so uh, great company very reputable uh and mr mr nance just asked me to kind of do the work on it because i was familiar with it uh, I, I don't know why you would even consider not doing this because you have nothing you have absolutely nothing now except for a map somebody draw with a pencil a year ago so with email, you're getting the map and you're getting the first year maintenance so even if you don't do anything else at least you've got a map and it's maintained for a year but then it would be up to the county commission uh for the you know years after that whether they want to maintain it or not but you know give me the free free version and, and a year maintenance I'll, I'll take it too but yeah it, but, but to answer your question though it won't be housing my office so i'm going to do my office i do have the opportunity for a short discussion with the company and, and the, the benefit of this is they're able to get down house to house to house is exactly where they are that's right and particularly if you get into the areas where that uh, line of the district is and goes through the neighborhood or goes through an area where there are multiple houses uh, you no longer have a question about whether house a is in one, in one district or house b is in another district you get the whole time to help you through tax taxing for for property tax yeah <laughs> not really i mean it's a you know, you know hey, yeah, I, i've got everything i need on my website so you got and I, i'm not complaining i'm i'm here for you but you guys ask me a lot you, you know you'll come to me people always have because we have the maps right. and say hey what district am i in uh you know we we had an instance where somebody asked me a few years ago and asked the probate judge which district they should run in i said i don't care running all of them if you want to because it's nothing to me but but you guys really this is my opinion as a citizen you need this because right now you have nothing i mean you have nothing but a paper map that somebody's drawn on and just from the mapping world just from what we do in property tax if you draw on a map with a pencil there's no legal leave nothing legally saying how wide that line is that line could be absolute zero that line could be a hundred feet wide because you draw it with a pencil so what even would do would be the legal language that i've been on so you get a legal map and, and we he come by on friday just to see me uh he wouldn't hear about that he just come out and check up check on me you know and uh i called mr nance and we come down and had a nice discussion with him and he explained uh that i guess where you vote is where you sleep so if it was an instance where the line ran through the house you could actually drop a dot on the house where the bedroom's at now of course he said that depends on if you're sleeping in the bedroom or on the couch you know it depends on which one is that but, but you have a legal you have a legal uh you know you have the legality behind it you have something to point to and say uh you know paul you're in this district this is where you're running you know if you have a legal, uh, legal map behind it uh, again if you never maintain it at least you've got a base which is more than you got right now i guess from my perspective uh, this discussion i had is we're able to get to a crisp dis distinction of where people live up in what district uh, without there being any ambiguity uh, in that and so in talking with our board registrars uh, team uh, they are very supportive of having this kind of capability to support them any other questions or comment so with that uh, if there's no further discussion do i have a motion to approve an agreement with the secretary of state to provide geographic information <laughs> systems technology no, I have we have a motion we have a second i'll second we have a second uh, any further discussion if none all in favor say aye aye motion carries thank you very much at uh, this time we'll move into uh, the work session portion of our uh, agenda uh, for the night the uh, first item on discussion is uh, uh, from the revenue commission uh, there are two items of discussion one is uh, contract with american financial credit services and the other is postage for mailing card tags so so the virtually any contract that we ever signed we just signed a contract where gis 
the other day, a, a new, uh, I mean, a new era of photography. Uh, and that's something that we discussed in the budget time. Uh, and you guys all know we're in the budget here that you know uh, what it's going to cost us and how, how it's going to be laid out. So the chairman signed that contract, which I, I can't sign into a contract with the companies. It has to be through the chairman. Uh, this one I didn't mention during the budget hearings because it doesn't cost us anything. It, it's zero cost to the county. But this company, what they do, and just to kind of explain, uh, if you don't know, if you don't pay your property tax, we have a tax lien auction in April, last Tuesday in April. So, you know, if somebody doesn't pay their property tax, we sell a tax lien and the county gets their money. But on personal property, there's a lot of legalities. If you don't pay your personal property tax, uh, the code says I can go to the business, I can seize bulldoze or whatever you got and sell it. But, but that puts the county on the hook for so many legalities that we don't, we've never done that. Uh, and there's a lot of cases where it's a business that's closed down and moved out of the state, moved out of the county. There's nothing for me to seize. But what this company, they're new to Alabama, they just started uh, counties this year. Uh, and Gene Maddox, he retired from the Department of Revenue, he was the Department of Revenue's attorney. He works for this company, so I'm, I'm certain that it's all legal and, and they're doing right. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll turn some accounts over to them. We may try 10 or 12 to start with, we may turn them all over to them, but it's the people in the past that, that we haven't collected personal property tax from them. Like I said, they moved out of this county, moved out of this state, but this company, they specialize in that, and they're good at it. And they'll, they'll try to collect those fees for us. Uh, and they'll take their fee out of, they'll, they charge the customer, they charge who they're collecting from, so that's how they get paid. So it's really no cost to the county. I mean, if you have any concerns about it, you know, we, we can talk it. I'm not on the deadline to sign the contract. I mean, uh, I'd like to sign it pretty soon and turn some over to them. But, you know, if you have any questions and Mr. Porter wants to check on it, uh, we'll be glad to, to you know, maybe put it on the next meeting or whatever. But well, I was the contract you got one. I, I got it. I should have already got it to you. I didn't apologize. But, but I'll get to, get it to you. And, um, any questions? Okay, any question or comments? That sounds like a straight thing. Yeah. So it, it, we will put this on the agenda, new business agenda, uh, for our next meeting uh, with a review of the contract. Yeah, I'll get rid of that blind book for the next meeting. Okay. The, the other item, uh, $2 is what I charge to mail a tag. I've been here 22 years, and 22 years I've been here, we've been charging two dollars. So if you mail your tag in, or mail, you know, you mail your renewal in, we charge a two dollar mail fee. And that two dollars is to mail your sticker back to you, or like this year, if you most of y'all might have got a new tag, depending on if you got a specialty tag or not. But this was the year that we sent out new tags. So we've always paid a dollar ninety-two. So it's always cost us to mail a tag. You know, we charge two dollars. We uh, it cost us a dollar ninety two, but now that two dollars is also for mailing your renewal notice. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff we have to send out. So this year, the post office is charging me five dollars and eighty cents to mail this tag. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to negotiate with them because not all post offices is charging me that. There's just one in the county, particular, that's hitting me for five eighty at least. You know, sometimes it's more than five eighty if we have two tags. Uh, I checked with Mr. Porter, and that's a local law that was passed, and it's not anything that requires a vote. Uh, it's just up to the county commission that says the county commission can raise that $2 fee as you see needed. So I'm not even here asking you to raise it. I'm just making you aware that we're losing money on tags. Um, Postage has gone up, as you know, in the past 20 years considerably. So you, you mentioned... Uh uh, sending other pieces of mail in addition to the tag and sticker. So how how many? So we send out five thousand renewal notices a month. That's that's you get your renewal notice in the mail to it's time to get your tag. That's a courtesy tag notice. I don't have to send it, right. but if I don't send you your renewal notices, we'll have a. And that's sixty cents plus plus the material. Right. So it's depending on what's in that envelope. You know, we we actually get a good discount on it, but. If you look at the cost of 
the same amount across the postage. And that's gone up, up, up. So what, what would you recommend that would, that would help ensure that you that you covered your cost? So, so that's why I'm here now. I'm not necessarily recommending anything now. I just want you guys to be aware of it because you can do different things. Um, somebody suggested, well, go to $5. You know, that'll cover it. But all that really does is causes that guy that lives at North Sun Mountain or Bridgeport or wherever, if I'm charging you $2, You'll say, well, it ain't worth it, I'll mail it. But if I go to five dollars, then what I do is cause more people to drive to the courthouse. So so we don't necessarily want to do that if you change the mail fee. You, you know, there's been some, some discussion over the years from the county commission about a tag fee. Uh, if you change the tag fee, everybody pays a tag fee. Uh, but if you just change the mail fee, I have a choice. I can, I can mail it in at five dollars or I can drive to the courthouse. But if we do that, like I said, what we're doing is causing more people to come here, and well, you know, we'd love to see everybody. Yeah, it's but that's it's not true. true to me that we lose money every time we, we send it to the mail. So, I mean, I, I definitely think we need to look at, at making it at least three dollars, three dollars, three fifty. I mean, you're still on the tag years. You got to keep in mind we don't send tags every year. That that's you know every four years the state changes the design. So it's not every year we send all the tags. And also, if, if you have five tags, I charge you $2 for each one, but I might stick all five of them if it's just a sticker in an envelope and send it back to you. And you, you would say, well, you make a lot of money. Well, I don't really because we have to pay for sending all those notices out and everything. So for several years, we've been right on the cusp of breaking even, if not, if not maybe making a little bit. But with some of these post offices going to 580 on this, it won't be long, we'll be losing. I, I, don't, I don't see any trend that tells me it's going to, postage rates going to come down. That has a I, I've checked a lot of counties, and, and other counties have told me that they're having the same issue I am. I can walk over to Scottsdale Post Office, and this is $1.92. I can go over to Stevenson Office, and this is 580 I can go to Flat Rock, and it's another price. And, and I did. I drove one day, drove to every post office in our county, and laid this on the counter and said, how much you got charging me to mail this? And they all gave me a different answer. So I started checking the Madison County, Marshall County, other counties. They're going through the same thing as, as we are. Some, some people think this is a package, and some people think it's a flat rate. But none of the post offices right now agree. And I'm hoping that's something that they deal with and, and figure out, and at least I'll get on the same page. But I'm afraid that same page is going to be 580. You know, right, yeah, because it just makes the, it makes the most sense. Once they start talking, that's what it's going right. to be. So, so in that case, um, you suggested something else, which is going up on, on tags. Um, what is, what is your so, so that, that? that's, again, that's up to the county commission. Our tag fee right now is a dollar and a quarter. It's been a dollar and a quarter since the 50s. So if you look at the code, that dollar and a quarter is supposed to be the money that I use to run the tag office. I, I mean, I don't have to tell you, I can't run the tag office on a dollar and a quarter. We have eight employees. Uh, we mail out 66,000 tags a year. There, there's no way on that dollar and a quarter at 66,000 tags I can run the post office, I mean, run the uh, tag office. So of course we have to rely on the county commission other funds. So that's never changed. Uh, the I don't know there's a rate anywhere in the United States or the world right now that's the same amount it was in the 1950s. A lot of, a lot of counties are still a dollar and a quarter. The Cab County is $10. Their tag fee is $10. It has been since 1991. Mm -hmm. so, but we don't know you look at this, I think, a little differently. Tag fee comes into the general fund. It does. The general fund then helps fund our general fund. Right. Postage fee take care of it. So the question is, do we do one or the other do both? I, I'm, I will tell you, given this condition of our general fund, we need to start thinking about what are revenue sources for the general fund. Mm -hmm. And so we need to look at this, I think, in the sense of where's the general fund, where do we think the general fund's going to be? Are there going to be any issues that are going to come up near term that may impact revenue sources for the general fund? And then look at it uh, in terms of not just tag food, but maybe other 
things that we need to consider to make sure that we have a viable, sustainable general fund for the county and address this. So I would say we need we need a little more discussion of this. We need to sit down and look at it from the standpoint of we got to take care of both. At least in my mind, I would suggest that we my goal today was to let you guys know that you you guys have the choice of how much to take the mail fee is. Y'all can decide to yeah, y'all can do y'all can do that tonight if you want to. You change the mail fee, but we cannot do you cannot change the tax fee. So, yeah. so but from the revenue commissioner standpoint, if you change the mail fee to five dollars, probably all you're really doing is making more people come to the courthouse. Which makes us busier, which makes more traffic on the square. Because if you go to a five dollar mail fee, I have a choice. I don't have to mail it; I can drive down here. So I just wanted you guys to be aware of this situation that we're probably losing money now, and we'll just continue to lose money on mail fees. So with that, with that choice in the, in the near future, moving to Liberty Lane. And so when they would come to North Sun, from North Sun Mountain to get a tag if they choose to, that's going to be less of an issue. The dollars crowd in that building. Once you get moved. Yeah. I mean, that's what I, that was the thought. I would think, my opinion, the goal, I love to see the people in this county, but the goal is to have less and less people come to the office. I mean, there's safety issues, you know, the more they can do internet, mail, you, you know, the more we can do with you not leave, without you leaving your home, you better. Oh, well, the mail fee is, is going to force the issue of people driving. I'm a cheapskate. I'll drive from Skyline for $300. I, I will to save $3. Can you probably buy the code to tell them what you're doing? Hey, that's my favorite. I'm going to get it. Okay, hold on. We're good. Let's have one more time. Yeah, I'm going to get it. 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 I'm trying to keep the call and going here and get our here so we can hear each other. So, but, but any questions about the mail thing, I'd be glad to answer them. I suggest that we take a little longer look at this in terms of what is going to be most beneficial to the county and how we deal with that. So okay. we do need to have some discussions, and I think we probably need to bring that to a subsequent subsequent meeting about. Uh, not just this, but also a discussion about uh, uh, our general fund and revenue for general fund and where we are, and uh, take that into consideration before we make a decision. I, I totally agree. I just felt obligated to tell you that you're probably losing money on this mail fee. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, with that, we'll move next to um, our parks and recreation department. Um, one of the things that we mentioned, it has been months ago, we mentioned that, probably that what we needed to have in each of our departments was an, uh, someone designated as an assistant for those periods of time when the directors are out that's going to be in charge of, uh, of, of overseeing the departments. Uh, so we have uh, asked our Director of Parks and Recreations, Director of Korea, to uh, put together a recommendation on upgrading a position to uh, Assistant uh, uh, Park Director. And uh, so I'll turn it over to uh, Director Priya. And there is a uh, recommended job description and there's an organization chart recommend, recommended for the chart in the factory. Yeah, in the back, you will see the updated job description to include the new title of Park Office Manager slash Assistant Director. A classification plan change, an organizational chart change, and a letter of recommendation for who I want to promote to this position. Um, all four will have to be voted on by the, by the commissioners. Um, currently, our Park Secretary is at a grade six, step three, which is a clerk three. For this title change, that will be bumped up to a grade eight, step one, at a cost of about 92 cents an hour. So for a small amount of cost, we're gaining quite a bit of support within the park for absences of the director, uh, allowing for vacation times, things like that. Um, the current secretary has brought up to speed two directors in the past and has been within the park for 
coming up on 10 or 11 years. So she's within the Parliament organization. She has currently the most experience within our county park system. Through the comment, I'd like to make, remember that our park has to have someone there seven days a week. It's not a five-day-a-week job. So, um, um, Connie, who is the secretary right now, fills in on weekends quite often uh, in addition to her uh, other five days a week. So, just, just a comment. And also holidays. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any questions? So, uh, real quick again, we have to... Modified work organization chart, correct, which we have here. We have to upgrade the uh, the job description to include these responsibilities as assistant manager. We call them to do that job, correct. And then it is uh, it is a pay grade adjustment. Yes, sir. Those are the three items. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, any comment or discussion? Any objection to putting this on the new business uh, agenda for the next meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, next uh, on the agenda is commission. Uh, it is a remote deposit service agreement with First Southern Bank. We have had a recommendation to, uh, rather than running checks to the bank, is to set up with First Southern uh, State Bank a remote deposit service agreement, which would entail placing equipment in the offices that we move checks to the bank, uh, which would be uh, our uh, solid waste uh, department and uh, the commission office. We do a lot of going to the bank with checks, and so this would cut down the, the time to do that. Uh, there is a proposed, not a proposed, there is a sample uh, agreement in your packet. Um, one of the things that I would note is in discussions with First Southern, I understand that they have agreed to waive all fees. They would place the equipment and it would have the typical kind of service agreement uh, regarding that as well as uh, we would be responsible for the equipment for any, I would call it damage to it caused by us, but if it's fair wear and tear, it's their responsibility as, as a redistribution. So this is just an option that has, has been requested. Uh, so anything that I, that I missed, Ms. Johnson? No, that pretty much covers it. Um, it would it totally stop going to the bank and the numbers cash? Some of them have to make that trip, but, uh, And Bob has spoken to the uh, state audit supervisor, and she has said that the other counties are already doing this. So, uh, any concerns? Uh, uh, any question with that? One question I would like to ask as we look at this is uh, in the environment we live in right now on the internet and web systems, uh, whether this gets tied up in that, and we've always been concerned about uh, cybersecurity and whether that would be a problem. So that is one question I would like to, to make sure we discuss with First Southern if we do this. So, any other comments, questions? I'd like to get these questions answered maybe in the following work session before we uh, move forward. That's just my thought. Okay. Okay, next we'll get to uh, uh, public works and uh, we have the list of uh, roads that we, uh, 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 local roads that was uh, provided in our last work session. Uh, we are at the point of need to make selections. Uh, we have had discussions, I will offer we've had discussions. In your packet is, is a, an update of uh, where we are with ARPA funds, what has been committed and, and what is projects to be uh, determined. Uh, 
uh, just to cover real quick for the world on that, because that will have to be taken into consideration as we look into the local roads. Um, we have committed a total at this point of 5.3 million, about 10 million, uh, 27,000. Um, in projects that we identified for consideration, there's another 4 point, roughly 4.3 million of um, the work uh, that we have looked at. That includes the areas we looked at tonight, courthouse structure, Liberty Lane. Also, um, we have an HVAC system in the jail that needs to be uh, addressed, and, uh, and then uh, a couple of other items uh, that are there. Uh, to include a consideration of $500,000 for roads. We talked about sources of funding. Uh, in sources of funding, we looked at uh, in our discussion with the uh, county administrator, uh, our director of uh, public works, and myself, um, to provide funding for approximately 20 miles of road. Uh, there are three sources of funds. In the public works budget, there is a budget line that uh, for materials has about $305,000 in it at this point. There may be some additional funds coming into that, but not, not much. Um, and then we would have to go to our cash balance and to uh, look at uh, our ARPA funds. For a million three, we believe that we can get about 20 miles of roads. So that's just my introduction to that. Let me turn it over to our a director of public works and uh, for further comment. So, Mr. Campbell. Thank you, Chairman. I, I don't have anything further to add to that, but I would be happy to answer questions or uh, forward anything from the information that was disseminated at the last meeting. Yeah, I will say a question did, did come up in discussion about how we allocate knowledge. Is it equal knowledge per district? Is it knowledge based on percentage, a percentage based upon number of roads per in district uh, as it compared to total roads in the county? Or, uh, so that, I'm just saying that question did come up. I don't have an answer for that. So in the past, it's really been a best fit scenario based on the products and the units. So our uh, most recent selections were made to where it was essentially spread as equal as, as could be. And it all, like I said, depended on which products were selected. So it wasn't exact to the two, but it was near even distribution. So what we are here is tonight we're trying to make get to the point where we get a recommendation from each of the commissioners the priority of roads in their county. And so what is this do we want to proceed with a basis of um, five miles per district? Comment? Okay, we'll proceed with five miles. We'll start off with five miles. Um, district one, comments? Um, I'm still working on uh, writing and evaluating the, uh, the roads that I have in my district. I put something out on Facebook asking for public comment, and uh, I'm still trying to see what work through that before I could make a recommendation of different roads in my district. Okay. District 2. I look at 107. You're talking five miles there. It's got a little over 6.49. Okay. So we have that would be a problem for you on this one. Okay. Does that include something on the mile? District numbers, it's not, is it? No, this is, uh, this will be the north or east side from uh, 25, can go 25 to okay. State Route 71. Okay. okay, District 3. 
Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to keep in the same order that we talked about. Yes, sir. Uh, so, whatever, whatever we'll, we get done. Can you have the conservative answer on the sheet? Yes. Okay. Item in order as later and aided as needs. Recommendations. Uh, I'm doing the same way as AJ. I feel like that uh, I'd like to do the same thing starting with, with uh, the top of my list and going down the list. So, but if it's five miles, you would get three, three on three, and one forty two? Yes, sir. Okay. And Commissioner Butler, for yours would be 156 Lake Boulevard. Mm -hmm. And that gives you right at four, four miles. And then we can, we can skip that 17 there and go to, go to 360. 366. Okay. And 107 from uh, District 2. And give some time to the uh, district going to take a look. Yes. Um, so we will learn how we go. I'm sorry. Uh, learn as we go uh, as a new commissioner. Uh, I understand that it means more than one or seven only. Uh, how does that uh, work? We've got 33 over the list at the top. Uh, and I know that's a lot of stuff. Is there uh, processes in which you can touch that and then part of the uh, 107? What's your thoughts there? Sure, if, we, if there's sections that are preferred or a different way that we would like need us to analyze that to look at, we'll be happy to, to look at a different strategy or whatever you need for your, for your district. Well, I have to say, I have written most of the words on this list in the last month. There's not a word on this list that does not need work. And I'm sure that you've had calls, each of you've had calls about other words that your, your folks in your districts would like to see work on. I do think we need to look at other sources of funding. We're going to have a meeting uh, Thursday. Um, and looking at one option, I think we need to look at that closely, and by closely I mean not just in, as an option, but uh, we need to look and make sure that it's, it's a good option for us. It's an option that's available now, and it's an option that is endorsed by the state, and uh, it will give us uh, nearly $6 million of additional funding to help us, help us with this while at the same time allowing us to retain about half of our rebuild, and if it grows over time, it would be a little more than half, plus our uh, uh, subset uh, and federal exchange funds uh, for roads. Uh, but it would be a 15-year payment period in the bond, and it would uh, uh, reduce the amount, but we would get a lot of roads done in three years. You can't, could get a lot of roads done in three years. We've had a discussion about strategically looking how we would do that so it would not be just paving. It would, we could also look at uh, road preservation as well as paving and, and other strategic looks at the way we would allocate those roads. So I'll just say that, it, that there is an option. Um, Last comment I would make is, is we, this year, to get 20 miles, we're going to have to go to ARPA and we're going to have to go to our cash balance. I do not see how we can continue to take money from cash balance year on year and uh, uh, for roads. Remember that that cash balance also funds disaster relief in this county if it happens, and this county is responsible for paying that up front. And so we ought to consider that if we look at this. But I think all that's on the table for the commissioners to look at and think about and uh, as we make this decision. But I'm going to go back to the very beginning. Are we okay this year with considering 500K ARPA 
uh, we would have to do that in a, in a, in a meeting as we do the roads. But any objections when we do the new business part of this, that the funding would come from those three sources. The sources would be cash balance, ARPA, and I'm sorry, Mr. Campbell, the, uh, the account that you would take the uh, 100, I think, for the... Yes, I thought 100 would be materials. Materials, yeah. that would go with that. So that would be $1.3 million to get 20 miles. Any objection? None? Okay. So in our next meeting, if uh, we can put this on the new business um, and uh, give you a chance uh, to take a look at District 1. Yes, okay. All right. So with that, we will, we will take that. Next is, uh, on, the, on the list is, we do have an agreement uh, with the state of Alabama to fund, help fund County Road 74. Uh, in your packet, there is the cover sheet, there is an agreement. Uh, Director King will discuss that. Uh, one of the issues that they have in that is that uh, uh, they would pay half, but any overage we would be responsible for it. with the new estimate. That, that estimate has now gone from two sixty dollars to $313,000 for the cost of hot mix. Uh, uh, work on the Regarding County Road 74, um, the daily average of traffic on County Road 74, there's a sheet, there's, we looked at it two, two times. One day there was 1,231 uh, cars on County Road 74, and the other one there was 1,272 on County Road 74. It was a primary area of trans uh, folks traversing uh, are going to the work, many of them. There's also what got attention, my attention on January 74, was back in 21, October 20th of 2021, got, I got an email from Ms. Kathy Cash, who, uh, going to work one morning, uh, hit a hot pothole, ruptured her tire, uh, ruptured her tire, and, uh, and so she got in touch with uh, me, she got in touch with the uh, uh, folks in Bridgeport, asking what could be done and why can't uh, that road, of course we get these kind of calls all the time, I understand. Uh, but going out and taking a look at County Road 74, uh, it, it is in pretty rough shape. Also, if you consider on the list of last, pack, last meeting that we had, in the packet of Rebuild Alabama Act grant funds, also the uh, Mr. Campbell provided us a list of roads in the county that are, are uh, major uh, major roads for traffic for folks, and County Road 74 is one of those. And one of these days, it's going to have to be addressed. We have the opportunity to get a substantial portion of the cost of that road. I understand there's been a, a concern about whether well, there may be another route for these folks. So we can suggest that, but these folks are, are going, they're going to go to work the way they go to work. We have 1,250 roughly cars tra traveling that road per day. So the question for us is, do we accept the county's offer to fund half of this? Um, near half of this, uh, County Road 74, so I'll open floor for discussion. Well, this is a road in my district, and I get hit with this almost daily, uh, especially as my business I have in Bridgeport. I've been, you know, approached by the mayor, I've been approached by the town council, I've been approached to uh, business owners from South Pittsburgh that have businesses that are just on the other side of the line, and they live there. I've been approached by Mr. Delver, who has a business that has direct access to this uh, road. It's a uh, it's a priority. It was priority uh, with most voters when I was campaigning. I mean, the day I ran for this position, uh, I would love to see this done. And uh, I'll just preface that with uh, any time that we can get the state to give half for a room to be done in our one district, it seems like I would be a proponent of uh, getting that road done at half price. You know, 
if we could come up with the funds to, uh, to do that. Because hopefully it's a bad road. Um, like I said, I'm faced with this every day, and I, I try to assure myself almost daily, too. So, so what I have to say about that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any other comments? So, where would the additional funding come for this? We're going to have to take it uh, again on a cash balance, or uh, uh, we'll try to have a discussion to, to keep it a 50 50 share with uh, Alba. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, a uh, cash balance uh, share of this is going to be in the neighborhood of uh, $180,000. If we take it out of there. You okay, Ron, with some of the uh, estimates in our uh, offer? Uh, it's not as high as uh, we suspect they will be. Uh, then there may be some, some room there. I think those are the only sources of funds right now that we have. Is there a deadline on when this needs to happen? This decision has to be made. No specific deadline is mentioned in the agreement, but I can tell it does mention some type of funding sources that are separate from this that do have deadlines. The pressing issue is the inquiries from the state on how we intend to move forward. So it's been some time since since this agreement was reached, and, and uh, they're inquiring about our intention on fulfilling and signing this agreement or not. Yeah, I've had calls to be questioning whether or not we're, we're going to proceed with this. Anytime you get an opportunity to get something that prior to me, we could. The only thing is, right now, the cost of materials and things are sky high. I was just wondering if that wouldn't be something that we could look at committing to and complaining about to see what materials do. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, materials are only going to get higher. I mean, the, most of the rock quarries have a significant increase because this first of the year and they generally have, which I understand we're probably on a, a lot of price, but I don't know when that price changes, but I mean, uh, materials are only going to get higher and the cost is only going to go up from, you know, my experience and being a general contractor the past 25 years. So, so one bit of good news on that front would be that at the time that the asphalt process were bid was in August. So that was essentially the apex of process that we've seen. So work from that point forward would adjust depending on the asphalt adjustment index. So as prices settle and we see a lower trend of prices on bituminous products, there would be a slight adjustment down, but it's not going to be all that significant in, in a one mile project. So they would adjust the price It would drop depending on the current price index. But the price paid would be at, at the time of work on the road, and when would you believe you could get to this in addition to what you're currently doing? So there are um, there are some parts of this that we could do sooner rather than, than later, and that's the first step, which would be patching. There are uh, 650 tons estimated. Six hundred and fifty tons of patching estimated in this, and that has potential limitations, but not seasonal limitations. So, rather than getting some of that work could start, it would be an immediate improvement in the road surface, at least in the first areas. Uh, followed by that, there would be uh, seasonal limitations on the scrub seal component. So, after the patching occurs in the worst areas, the entire roadway would be sealed. <coughs> with a scrub seal. So it's actually a uh, chip seal application and that, that has temperature limitations as well. So it would need to be a bit warmer for that. And then the final layer would be a wet and surface layer and it has even warmer temperature limitations. So some of the wet weather permitting could take place over the course of the winter and then we're going to need temperatures to moderate before the remaining things. But there could be an immediate improvement and work started soon. So, if we were to spend 180 on chip seal, 180 on chip seal, how much of that could be chip seal? 
How much chicken would it be to go in and chips in that? Well, my numbers that I use for local roads wouldn't apply, and the reason I say that is because of the level of traffic that's on this roadway. Some salacious materials are not allowed over certain thresholds of ADT. So when we get beyond 500 ADT or 500 cars a day, we have to start looking at alternate sources that are like polish. So that's, that's the reason this road has landed in the hot mix network of roads and has been maintained that one. Okay. I would propose that uh, we put it on the new business agenda for the 27th and bring forward as part of that discussion uh, sources of funding recommendation. Any objection to that? Any? Okay, so let, let me back up on one question. Uh, I know we don't have the District 1. Um, recommendation yet we'll give some time for that but do you would you need us to set aside the rules and approve district two three and four tonight or can you wait until the, the 27th no we can we can wait it's not okay. all right and if, and if we can help in that process i know this is new and quick and it's it's hard like i said from the beginning it's it's hard to decide what not to do so if we can help you please Please call us, okay? We want to know. Okay. Uh, if there are no other comments, we'll move to the force from the staff, First County Administrator. Thank you, Thank you for standing in tonight. Really appreciate that. Uh, Madam Sir County Engineer. Madam Sir, thank you. All right, thanks. And thanks for all the work you've done with the thank you. at this. County Attorney. I don't want to blame you for the Christmas Day party. I don't want to blame you for Christmas Day. Merry Christmas Day, Mark. Okay. Anyone uh, else? <coughs> Chairman. Yes, sir. Thank you all very much. Mr. Chairman. And uh, the Lord's Day work for you guys on some projects. And I uh, really appreciate the opportunity you've given to us. And uh, we'll give you a, a wonderful job. We'll just like to have you back. Yeah, thank you. I will say thanks for what you've done so far with our inspectors. You kept us all involved in, in that discussion and as you proceeded. Okay, with that, uh, comments from uh, the Commission uh, District 4. Commissioner McBride. So, uh, thank you for John said. Uh, we said we want to have a Merry Christmas and a uh, safe holiday, and we'll see you back after Christmas. District 3, Commissioner Butler. Merry Christmas. District 2, Commissioner Christmas. Merry Christmas. District 1, Commissioner Gold. Uh, we had, we had a uh, my school training event last week in Montgomery. Uh, I enjoyed that uh, with the ACCA, getting to know some of the other commissioners, new commissioners throughout the state, and uh, getting to spend time with my fellow commissioners here. Then we can get in setting to the legislative portion of that and having dinner. Uh, it's you know it's an honor and privilege to sit here with you and uh, I'm, I'm thankful to be here and I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I would just like to say thank you for all the hard work that all of our city, all of our county employees are doing across across the county and what they're doing for us in, in this county. And Merry Christmas to everybody. And uh, with that, next meeting date will be December the 27th. Time will be five o'clock. Do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? We have a motion. We have a second. Second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much.